Yeah, thanks very much for coming and joining us for the afternoon session. Uh, we have an amazing panel. Before we go to that, um, I'd like to invite uh, my friend Matt Hoskin. Where's Matt? Is Matt in the house? He's out there. Um, Matt, just to say a couple of words. I know the conversation around uh, immigration has come up over the last few days, uh, especially as it relates to investment and the entrepreneurial ecosystem here and what those guys are doing. Uh, we've had Nigel and uh, Peter Crisp come and talk about uh, the strategies of immigration and, and NZTE around helping develop the economy, what the future of the nation is, and, and how we tell that story to our foreign audience. Um, but I've had a, the opportunity to work with Matt over the last year now uh, and learning a lot about the immigration process and, and how that uh, can be really aligned to help the ecosystem thrive. So uh, I'd like to invite Matt here for a few minutes just to say a few words and, and tell us about what immigration is working on in these specific areas. Give it up to Matt Hoskin. <laughs> who is going to start with a poem? He, yes. All right. So, okay. So when uh, Yosef and I uh, got together at his office, uh, our office actually, a while ago, and he was talking about New Frontiers, he said, you're going to have to get up and do something really personal to you to introduce yourself. He's really sprung this on me. Um, but actually, I said, well, I do, back in the 90s, I went through this really creative period. At least I think it's creative. When you hear it, you might not think so. <laughs> um, but I, in, in the... It, funnily enough, it was when I came to New Zealand. It was just after I came to New Zealand. So I came to New Zealand to play rugby in Invercargill, of all places. And um, I'm a huge supporter of Southland and Invercargill because it's kind of like... Um, it's distilled down New Zealand experience in many ways. But I went through this hugely creative period because I was in Southland, I met my now wife, went back to the UK, and... Um, one day, uh, these uh, four lines just popped into my head, and, and I've got a feeling this is going to be my Beowulf. So I've got four verses of this poem. I think there's going to be more to come as I get older. So um, I'm heavily influenced by uh, Edward Lear. For those of you who know who Edward Lear was, um, so it's somewhat ridiculous. It's called the, uh, the Gibbon of the Gravy. The Gibbon of the Gravy swung down upon the veg, and by rearranging broccoli, built a very tasty hedge. He bounded across the carrots and tiptoed upon the peas, and the deep and dangerous stuffing went right up to his knees. After scrambling o'er the tatties and vaulting o'er the roast, he reached his kingdom's farthest point, the Yorkshire pudding coast. <laughs> As the cold wind whipped across the horseradish sea, he donned his cabbage coat, and in search of new and distant shores, set sail in a gravy boat. So, there we go. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, I actually lost it until a couple of days. Uh, just thinking I was going to come here. I think I must have had some premonition that Yossi was going to put me on the spot. Um, but look, thank you very much for inviting me up to speak and thank you very much for inviting us uh, from government uh, to actually be here. And, you know, it's obviously a real privilege. I've known... Uh, well, actually, Matthew, you were the first, uh, first point in the kind of... the first node, really, of the network. So I've known the guys for... Uh, two or three, four years now maybe, on and off, and I've, I've developed a, a really close relationship with Yosef in particular. Um, but I guess what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about was uh, what we're doing in immigration to, sh to turn the dial, to make the boat go faster. And I, I think there's a couple of things that um, I want to, a couple of messages that I want to leave with you. Um, first of all, government can be creative. Um, Nigel and Peter Crisp, who I think if you guys were here on Monday, you'd have got a very strong sense of how passionate they are about New Zealand. Now, clearly, I'm not a Kiwi. I have two Kiwi kids. I am very passionate about New Zealand. I feel very privileged to be here. But I think it's very important that government looks at problems in a creative way. Um, secondly, that in immigration, you know, there are two sides to immigration. There's opportunity, the stuff we're talking about now, but there's risk. We can't get away from the, the risk bet. Um, governments need to manage risk at the border. It's a very big deal and it's increasingly a big deal. So that stuff will never go away. But what we've got to try and find a way of doing and what we try and do is find ways of being creative 
and using immigration as a lever for economic growth, not just a border, you know, kind of passport stamping exercise. You know, everyone does that. So in a small country that is a long way away where people like Yosef and Matt and Brian and everyone who's sat here today can make a disproportionate difference, how can immigration be part of facilitating that, not, you know, stifling it? And I think that's what we're trying to achieve. And I think the other thing is complementarity. Uh, just because we're government, one of the things I really hate, if I'm really honest, is being called a bureaucrat. People spit it at you sometimes. And actually, you know, um, I, I absolutely reject the old way of government. You know, we, we have this construct in immigration and in, in the Ministry of Business and Innovation and Employment around, you know, the policy guys come up with a policy and the enforcement guys kick people out and, you know, people stamp people's passports and stuff like that. But it's actually not, it's a system. So when we started the investment work, it's been a bit like being an entrepreneur, or as Yosef called me once, an intrapreneur. And I, I know what that means. But when we started the investor program five or six years ago, it was born out of a very simple idea that we could attract uh, really smart people here with capital, with commercial expertise, and with international networks that would bring New Zealand closer to the rest of the world. That was, the, that was it. That was the core of the idea. I've still got the one-page document that I, that I wrote it down on. And, and in, in, in order to start that, it was a bit like... It was a bit like starting a business. So no one really thought it was a good idea. Uh, I had to borrow a friends and family. That's other parts of the budget, right? So uh, no one gave me any budget for this. We've owned, and then we did a bit of capital raising a couple of years ago, and guess what? Someone gave us some money. They actually thought it was a good idea. So we're now at the point where we have about $3.5 billion in the pipeline. We have something like... Um, I think it's 1,100, 1,200 investors in that pipeline. Um, we're doing some research work at the moment that shows that the actual flow on investment from that three and a half billion, you know, whether it's in bonds or what, it doesn't really matter um, because it's what it represents, the relationship with New Zealand, that it, it gives us an opportunity to build a relationship with those people. But the flow on investment is somewhat, is we reckon, in the, in the region of three times that. Um, what we've got to keep doing and getting better at is working out how we can get that working productively for New Zealand. Not just stuck in bonds, you know, not just going into the Auckland property market, but, you know, New Zealand's a, an open free country, it's a free market, people make investment decisions based on their preference and what seems sensible at the time. So, the other thing that we're doing um, at the moment, the conversation we're having that Joseph wanted me to talk about was around uh, entrepreneurship. So for a, for a while now, having, as a result really of meeting Yosef and Matthew and Brian and being exposed to the way they think and, and, and how they work and their values, it occurred to us that there's this huge gap. We've got in the investor program for high net worth individuals, that's great, you've already made your money. We've got this entrepreneur, it's called an entrepreneur policy, but it's like come in, buy a business, employ three keywords, it's, it's just buying a business. But we have this huge gap where people who have really outstanding ideas, who could really, you know, could be the next zero. We, we have nothing for them. You have to have proved yourself before you get here. We also struggle a little bit with round pegs in square holes or square pegs in round holes. So people like Scott Nolan yesterday, I thought Scott's talk was incredible yesterday. So how do we get, if Scott said, hey, I'd like to come to New Zealand, how do we find a policy that works for the anomalies who can do stuff that no one else really can, a small number of people making a huge difference. So um, my chief executive, Nigel, who some of you saw the other day, rang me. He just really, really excited after being here and after talking to Scott and after talking to you guys about how we could make a product that is completely different, how we could look at this in a really un-government way. We've still got to manage the risk, all that sort of stuff. Politicians got to be comfortable with it, but how can we use immigration as a lever to... Uh, not just shift the dial a bit, but like turn it all the, all the way around. Um, and, and I just finished by saying that the, the key to the work that we've done has been networks. It's been about people and about networks. And look, when I started doing this work, I used to get a bit concerned I didn't know about capital raising, what it meant, and all that sort of stuff. And actually, I just let go and realised it doesn't matter. 
so other people know about that stuff. I can go and talk to Phil about that stuff, you know, if I really wanted to find out about it. The key is presenting a face to government that people don't expect and being open to difference. Uh, so the networks we've built across government and across regions and, and with, you know, every, you know, people here have really started to pay dividends. And if it wasn't for those networks, this stuff wouldn't work. So I hope that gives you some optimism for the future. Um, and, and I'm more than happy to talk to any of you about this stuff and, and keen to hear views because this needs to be, it's not just government doing it unto you, this needs to be business, government, society, culture, it's the whole deal. Thanks very much. <laughs>